Okay, we're going to start here with part two of four for module seven, SAM textbook project. You've already done these steps of downloading the files and everything. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to open our folder, uh, our documents folder, where we saved all of our work from steps uh, one of four and pages, pages uh, one to ten. So we're going to open our project and uh, we're going to start on page 11 now. It says to open a template based file and save it as a workbook. So we have a template file that we've saved already. And our template file is called MI Cells Analysis Template. I wanted to open the, in this particular uh, view because I want you to see the different icons. An Excel file is this little green uh, piece of paper or a workbook. A Word is the blue. Uh, access file is the uh, red or orange. Uh, our, uh, our HTML file, uh, which is a web page, is going to be whatever icon is your default. Mine is uh, apparently the uh, Internet Explorer or Edge, I think is what they call it now. Uh, and then we also have an Excel file. And then this is a GIF. It's a picture. Okay. The new one, the template, has a little or green uh, line across the top. So it looks different than an Excel worksheet. Also, if you go to the file types here, which is a good thing to start learning to do because this helps you understand what the files are. So this is the Excel template. So this is what we're going to open to start with. OK, obviously, you can look at the name, but also remember that we're wanting to work with a template so that uh, we've already done some of the work. So on page 11, it says click the file explorer button and uh, navigate to your data file storage location. Ours was the module seven project that we created a folder for. Step number two says to double click the file name, the template in my cells analysis. So we're going to double click it. Step number three wants us to save it because we don't want to actually change the template. We want to use the information on the template for something else. So it says to click the save the quick uh, access toolbar and click on the save button. It's going to pop up this. And then uh, what we're going to do is we're going to save it as uh, in our file folder. So we don't want to save it in our OneDrive. We want to go down to our Module 7 project folder, find that, click on it, and then click on Save. Now, if you notice, uh, don't click Save yet. If you notice, it puts a 1 there. That, that keeps you from accidentally uh, saving uh, more than one of these and end up having with uh, extra extra um, work being done. So every time you open it, it's going to apply a new number to it. So when if you save it without changing anything, it's not going to save it on top of another template file that you've been working on. So but because of the book, it wants us to t change the name of this. So now we're going to change the name to SCEX7 in my cells analysis, but we're going to get rid of the template name because this is going to be the analysis that we're using. Now, if we were doing multiple years, this might be 2021, uh, 2020 to 2021 or whatever. But in our case, it just says to name it cells analysis. OK, and then you're going to click on the save button. OK, now we have a new file name and this is going to be our uh, Meyer Insurance Cells Analysis Worksheet that we have the dummy data in. And now we're going to go ahead and start doing some stuff and importing data. Remember, our different business branches, our different insurance companies, uh, branches have different data that we need to pull all of this analysis in from all four places. So that's what we're going to start working on. Um, so turn the page. First thing we're going to do is import from a text file. OK, so uh, when we save data, we can save it many different ways, but a common delimited text file is a way that all different types of software can see. And we separate the pieces of data by a comma. So that's why it's called comma delimited. And we're going to work with that right now. So with Meyer Insurance, work, Insurance Worksheet active, select cell A5. And then we're going to click on the data tab. And now we have the different data to pick from. Okay. Now, we've worked with this before in another uh, project that we worked on. So we're going to click on text or a common separated text file.
computer is running slow. Very slow. Okay. And remember, we put all of our data in one location. We put it in our Module 7 project. So it automatically, since that was our active uh, uh, folder, it's going to pop that open. So we don't have to look for it. It's already right there. So it wants us to double click support EX7 branch 82410 in the CSV file. Now it doesn't have the .csv file, but if you widen the type, you can see that the file type is a comma separated file. So we double click it. Uh, ours allowed us to double click it. We could have also just clicked on it and clicked on open. Should be importing the data. It says not responding up here at the top. So it's possible that I have another program running in the background that is slowing us down. If it takes too much longer, I'll stop it and restart it. Okay, so here is sample data from that. And uh, it pops up and it shows us on page five or page 15 that this is what it's supposed to look like. Now, this has been changed since the uh, last version of Excel. Now we have a load button down here and it's going, we're going to click on it. We're going to click on load two uh, instead of import that used to be. Now we have a load two so we can actually load two different places. Okay. So we're going to click on the existing worksheet here. That's on step three. And we already have our cell selected where we want to start importing it to. So we just click on existing worksheet and then we'll go click OK. And it should start pulling that data in. Okay, and it's loaded the five rows. It says close the queries and connections pane because we really didn't need it. And it says when comma, Excel imports a common separated value data, it comes in as a table. Okay, it kind of came in as a table. So we need to remove the features specific to tables such as the banded rows, the columns. Remember we did tables uh, the last time uh, in here in module six. So we're going to have to remove the table. So uh, to refresh your memory, you're going to display the table tool designs tab as necessary. So table tools design tab. Click remove the check mark on the banded rows. So we're going to get rid of banded rows. And then we're going to remove the check mark for header rows. And we'll click on OK. Yes, we want to remove the header row. And it's removed it. Now it wants us to delete row 5. So we're going to right click here to delete row 5. We could also go up here to delete and delete row 5. But I've already right clicked. I like shortcuts. Okay, so we delete row 5. Now, step number 2, I don't know if you noticed on here, but it changed our column widths. All of that work we did. So now we need to go back and change our column widths, B, and G, B to G. We change our column widths back to 15. So format, column widths, 15. Okay. So that's taken care of. Now, there are several different things that we can do with our data. So in page 17, it talks about it. Uh, we can use the concat or the concentrate uh, or join function uh, to join two or more text data items into a single expression. I think we did that with a category and the name of something in one of our other assignments. Uh, or we can use a left function to specify a number of characters from the beginning of a specified text string. Or the right function to display a specified number of characters from the end of a specified string. Or we can even use the proper function, which converts the first letter of each word to a text screen 
to uppercase similar to a title case in a word processor. Okay, so on the next page, on page 18, it shows us all those different functions that we might be able to use. Uh, this would be useful, for instance, if I was wanting to pull in a list of names and I have a column for first name, a column for middle name, and a column for last name, and the new Excel worksheet I'm pulling it into says name. So I need to put all three columns into one cell uh, for uh, the new worksheet when I'm importing data. Okay, So that's what we're talking about. When we manipulate data, pulling it from one place to another, sometimes we want to combine pieces of information or we need to separate pieces of information out. Okay, so, so with that in mind, we're going to go ahead and start working on that. The following tr steps trim excess spaces from the category data that we imported. See all of this? Okay. Why? You notice that the data was stored with the same extra spaces, making it impossible to align the words in the column. Uh, in a separate part of the workspace, you'll use the trim function to remove all spaces from the text except for single spaces between words. Then you'll paste the trim values to replace the original. So select cell B11. And it wants us to type in equals and then trim B5, parentheses B5, and then enter. So it's going to take the data from B5 right here, and it's going to put it in after it's trimmed. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay. So it got rid of that extra space. Now it says drag the fill handle of B11 down through B15. It's going to use that same formula, and it's going to trim all that. So it got rid of all those extra spaces. Okay, it says do not deselect the data, so I'm still leaving it selected. And now we're going to go up here to uh, page 19. It says to paste the values. In the following steps, cut the data from cells B11 through B15 and paste only the trim values back to B5 through B9. Okay, so here's the steps on how to do that. With the range still selected B11 to B15, we're going to hit Control C to copy. And then we're going to right click B5. Now we're on page 20. And we're going to click on the paste values area right here, the paste drop down. And we have all these different choices. And then what we want to do is we want to paste only the values. So here's the paste values but, uh, section. And we want to paste only the values. We'll click on it. So it pasted only the values. Now I no longer need B11 through B15. So I'm going to delete it. So I'm going to delete the values or the data. Now it says select cell A10. And it wants us to click Save. All right, now uh, we're going to import data from an access table. Okay, so select that cell A10, which we already still have it selected, and now this is where we want to import the data to. So we don't want to be up here because it'll overwrite. So select cell A10. One of the things that I noticed uh, that it hasn't corrected yet is we still have these little purple lines, uh, and in the textbook it still has a purple line, so it's not something we skipped or messed up. It's just still there. Okay. All right, so uh, A10, click that get data again. So we're going to go to our data, and we're going to get data. And this time, we're going to get data from a database. Okay, so we're going to click on get data from a database. And we already know it's an access database because we saw it a while ago. So we're going to get data from an access database. There's all different kinds of databases out there. It's going to pop up this file explorer again. Again, because we have all of our downloads in the correct folder, our module 7 project, it allows us to do it. So instead of double clicking at this time, I am going to go ahead and click on import. Okay. 
Now it's going to pop up a navigator and it's going to show us information inside our data table. Uh, databases have multiple tables, so that's what it's showing us. If we had multiple tables, then they would list all of these. And it's going to say, well, which ones do you want to import? Okay, so this is the only table that we have, so we're going to click on it. And it's going to show us what data is in that particular table. Okay, so that gives us our preview. We can, sub we can expand this out more and see all of the da data that's in that data table. I'm looking for the navigator. And it wants us to click on edit. I do not see our navigator button. This should be our navigator dialog, but I don't see edit. Whoops, I don't know what I clicked. Oh, I double clicked it. Okay, so if I double click it, it gets into the editor. Okay, let me bring that over. All I did was double click the navigator, and it okay, popped up to edit. Okay, so this gives us everything. So click the desired column heading. We wish to delete because okay, there's stuff in here we don't need. We don't need the column this. So we're going to remove that column. So we're going to click on remove columns. So it got rid of the column. So now we have just the data we want. Now we're going to click on close and load. We're going to click on the close and load to now. And it's going to ask us where we want to load it to. And we want to load it to the existing worksheet. Ma'am? Okay, thank you, ma'am. Okay, in existing. And then we're going to click on okay. And it's going to pull that data in. Okay, and we'll stop here. And I'll pick up from here uh, next time we are able to meet. Have a wonderful afternoon.